You know, I've always imagined that people who have, have arrived at a certain level of celebrity are, must become like politicians, that, that all of the people that you, that got you to where you are will, will uh, want you to, to be nice to them or they'll, or they'll cut the string and you'll come crashing down like a puppet. You know, so, you know, all the, when you become president and then you realize yeah. that all the, the, everyone in business who got you there and you have to, you have to kiss everybody's ass. Yeah, and, yeah. he was late. Like. Yeah, so, you know, I always, always imagined that this is the same in entertainment and there are people who are very, very famous and very powerful in uh, show business and I always thought that was what it was like. So I, I think I've, I've, I'm kind of a, you know, Far from this. Yeah. But do you, do, do you think you still keep your freedom? Oh yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Do anything I want. It's different on stage because you're dealing with a, an ancient ritual. In the studio, dealing with physics, electromagnetism, and hydrodynamics, so it's, it's just different, you know. You can tamper with it, you know. You can paint it blue, and you can break it in half, and you can, you know, diamond cutting under the best of circumstances. On the studio, it's, it's still diamond cutting, but you're on a truck that's moving, you know. So it's an endless balancing act between what you want and what you can have and what they couldn't find, but you'll have to substitute for. In the studio, you can get like, you know, like a prince. Bring me 300 white horses, you know. Paint their hooves blue, please. Thank you. <laughs> you know, down the road, everything is busted up and, you know, he didn't make the ride, you know. The eggs weren't in the anvil case, and they're all over the blanket, and the blanket is torn by the, you know. But we're doing okay. Do movies and music play off each other? Do, do, does one affect the other? Yeah, sometimes. Uh, uh, you see, I, I believe that all, that all things really aspire to, to the condition of music including films and stories and that if it has some as music in it then it has value i don't think songs try to be films i think films try to be songs mm. um, it's a pure uh, form of expression and it's a very simple one and it's one that anyone can do Any, you don't have to have a lot of gear you can do you can do it on a drum. Kids write thousands of songs before they learn to talk. Everybody has music that they just have to try and get out. I like what time does to your memories. I like I like it all has to do with what kind of lens you you're using. I, I like the way things are distorted by time. And, you know, I like listening to music far away and you hear it wrong. You hear it mixed in with everything else. And uh, so I usually try and uh, step back so things are a little blurred for me. Uh, it's like, a, uh, like water stains on the wallpaper. He thought it was part of the design, you know? But it's not. I like that. So you kind of looks like South America, you know. You go, to, you know, you go into the. I mean, that's part of it. I uh, write and you know about about the things I see around me, you know. Uh, I was reading an article uh, with Ricky Lee Jones, and she was saying that uh, you have have become that person. You know, at first it was more of a, uh, an observation, and you became that character. 
that you talk about in your songs through living it, through having to live it as an artist. Do you relate to that? Yeah, well, she's right. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a dangerous business, you know. It's, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. It's um, like I was saying before, uh, it's kind of like a, 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 a photographer going to a wedding and ending up married, you know. I, so I, uh, you know, you're bound to get a little on you, you know. <laughs> you go poking your nose in the, you know, down the, down the wrong street, you know. I, uh, you know, I'm, as far as being a character in my own stories, I, I, I remain in all of the stories. Uh, but at the same time, I think the creative process is, uh, is like, you know, uh, it's like gumbo, you know, it's a combination of uh, imagination and uh, experience and memories and, uh, you know, so by the time the story is finished or the song is finished, uh, it may or may not resemble where the story came from. You know, songs uh, are really just very interesting things to be doing with the air. And, uh, and, I, and, I, and I, love, I love working with, with tunes and, 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 and I guess, you know, we all love music, but we really want music to love us, you know. I was uh, 15 and I, I snuck in to see Lightning Hopkins and uh, Amazing show, him and, and, and every time he opened his mouth, he had that, that uh, uh, orchestra of gold teeth, and it was just, uh, I was devastated. And, I, and then I saw him do the show, and he walked through a, a door and, and slammed the door behind him, and on the door it said, I swear to God, keep out. <laughs> it said, keep out. This room is for entertainers only. And I knew at that moment that I had to get into show business as soon as possible. I was about, uh, I don't know, maybe I was 21. I was living in a little apartment in Silver Lake with my dad. And, uh, and I was reading the LA Free Press. And I, um, Notes from a dirty old man was in there, and I just thought this is remarkable. This this guy's the this guy's the writer of the century, and and he's being published in a in this kind of uh, street rag, which seemed kind of poetic and perfect for him to be there. And of course, you felt much more like you had discovered him as well, and that, that he wasn't being brought to you, but you had to dig and find him. You know, my dad spent a lot of time in the bars, so I was drawn to to places like that, dark places. My dad drank in the afternoon in really dark bars. And, and um, so I, I guess that's how it began. And of course, it's much more than that. But, but it, it, the place that I hooked into him was the fact that he was um, seemed to be a writer of the common people and street people and looking in the corners of the dark corners where no one seems to want to go and certainly not write about. And um, so, yeah, he seemed like the, he was the writer for the dispossessed and the uh, people who didn't have a voice. I, I guess I started reading Jack Kerouac when I was still in high school. And um, so I guess that's over 10 years ago. And um, I, from what I know of Garowak uh, during the 50s, uh, was a, an established literary community in, in the States. It was, uh, it consisted of a, a very almost snobbish sort of a, attitude towards writing and it was a kind of tight ass Kerouac I guess was responsible for 
being referred to as a, a uh, at the vanguard of a of a group of literary misfits uh, who broke off and uh, started their own little group of uh, incorrigible, irresponsible uh, writers. And uh, in fact, Puma Kampoti even at one point referred to Kerouac as a typist. I guess time will tell uh, whether Kerouac will survive uh, as he does in my eyes, being a, a very important uh, contemporary uh, American writer. He's kind of a cross between um, Andy Granatelli and uh, Dostoevsky. <laughs> I went up to Napa for a, what we call a musical summit. You'll never know just how much I care. We talked about uh, the fact that he wanted most of the music written before he uh, started shooting. I would like to present to you to Mr. Tom to Waits. Appear. Tom, Tom Waits, ladies Mr. and gentlemen. Mr. Tom Waits, sitting next to Mr. Waits, is Mr. Bones Howe. And we have Mr. Richard, Richard Beggs. <laughs> Way to start is, well, the picture and the music, I think, are going to uh, trade off. Yeah. Like Francis said, sometimes the music is going to lead, and other times we're going to get a piece of music and picture together. It just isn't going to work. Then you call it a son of a bitch, and you beat it up and you find out how strong it is and if it wants to stay, you have to stand back and, and, and dump on your own children and, uh, and find out if they're strong enough to want to fight back and stick around. So that'll happen with scenes and, and music as well. When you're working with these musicians yeah, right. that you hire to play on your records, do you have do you have any really strange think. suggestions for them? Well, I wouldn't call it strange, no, but I try to tell them if they're going to be in the car for any more than two hours, don't listen to any music, you know, because it's early in the morning and you've got to drive up here and record at about 10 a.m. And, you know, and I tell them, uh, you know, if, if it's at all possible, turn the radio off and don't play any, any music because I, I like to start fresh and clean. And uh, yeah. that's really the only real thing that I, I, I'm adamant about. Really starting fresh and thinking you would just play with people that had never played or heard <laughs> music. Never, yeah, people that, yeah. Well, it's, it's, a, yeah, you know, it's just one of those things. It's like nice to know that, it's, that whatever you're doing is the first thing that happened that day. I mean, musically, the first thing that happened. So. Right. Some days you get up and you work with emus. Yeah. yeah. And other days you get up and... You work with musicians. Exactly, yeah. Very similar.